Alrighty, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've, I've been seeing some people out there melting down, <laughs> lots of pain and suffering out there. Uh, I wanted, I was reading this Motley Fool article. You know, misery loves company, guys. I got, I got to make this video. Uh, but th this was really funny. So, Palantir is an intriguing, it has an intriguing position in a service niche that could, could see huge growth over the long term. But investors should approach the stock with their personal <laughs> appetite for risk in mind. While the recent sell-off, blah, 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 it's probably fair to say the stock wouldn't be a great fit for everyone, right? So, like, yes, and I've been saying this for a long time with Palantir, like, uh, you know, people had asked me, I think, in the early days what the price target for, for my price target for Palantir was. I was like, I don't do technicals, I don't have a price target, but jokingly would say, like, 31 by 2025, you know, like, because for me, like, I've been saying this for a while, the, ret the return's way out in the future, and this time in the interim is just a time to acquire shares way 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 back when you know we haven't seen the inflection point and that allows you to comp compound the multiples later on and i want to share with you this this video from jg's channel uh it used to be called beyond our money now it's called mr moon money where we talked about this uh and this this was ages back you know um so, so they're take blowing it out of the water listen. already um with the growth they're getting in you're starting to see price targets being raised um you know we talked earlier about that goldman sachs thing uh, so yeah, I, I think you're right on that. I don't, I don't know. Like I can't, I can't do price targets. I try not to. I jokingly do them. Like I, I jokingly mentioned that I say 31 by 2025. You know, like, like because I, I, I'm not super bullish on it until they reach the inflection point where they can scale to hundreds of thousands of customers. Like, but see, like for me, the reason I'm investing in Palantir isn't for that any of that intermediary phase. My return on investment I expect from this company is at least 10 times what I'm putting in. I think it's going to be closer to 20 times what I'm putting in. Uh, it could be bigger than that, you know, but like, I don't, I'm not investing in the company because like, there's some, some intermediary between, you know, 500 and, <laughs> and 25 that I'm interested in, other than like, I don't want to lose my ass for two years on a negative return of like, say 50% if I need to tap any of that money for any reason. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be a little bit cautious. So I try to keep my buys in, in a relatively good right. channel. Um, I, but I'm buying consistently. I'm buying every month. I'm buying about a hundred shares, you know. So like, just keep buying. Yeah. And uh, you know, like for me, like I'm not really paying too close attention to, to am I buying at 23 or am I buying at 20 anymore? Because it's once everything kind of trades in a channel. And for me, like once it kind of establishes that channel, I've seen that bounce enough times off 20 to feel pretty confident that if I'm in that kind of low 20s, it really doesn't make a difference. It's like any, and, and even if it dropped down to 15, I wouldn't see it stay in there for very long because i think any analyst in the world would say palantir 15 is a massive buy so like i'm just not super worried about the short term there i i'm looking for the 20x return post 2025 at some point you know i do think it could be like an amazon where if you put in ten thousand dollars in amazon during the found you know when it went public you know that today would be worth 12 million dollars right so I, I do think it could be on that level of a return. And so I'm just not like super worried about the price, but I, I think to me, I'm like, it's going to trade sideways in my opinion, just cause like there's so many problems with getting to that inflection point and getting the growth really moving. And so many analysts are going to love to hate this stock. Like there's, it's like every technology stock that people even remotely don't like, there's like some analyst somewhere that's going to, you know, hammer it and they'll probably have the biggest microphone. And so it's like, it's just like it, the, Amazon went through the same damn thing, dude. Like, and and so like I think that it's it'll, it'll face a lot and broader market forces. So there's a good uh, thing to talk about there is that we're, we're in a kind of time where there are lots of turbulent broader market forces at work. And so you know there's plenty of potential for things to to tank just because of that. Nothing that the company does, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So you have to kind of bait. There you go and check the date, right? So like, are you one of those people who fall in the category? of someone who's averse to the risk and you're really I mean just this is gut check time are you in or are you out if you're if you're not like me and you don't see this company's potential for the long run or you do but you can't your time horizon just isn't there like that's gut check time you know and for me like just keep buying you know put my buys in try and use this time to accumulate shares and de and bring my dollar cost average down you know but it's I think that like people have gotten confused as to like why they're in this stock or or you know like what's the point of investing in this thing it's just tanking you know like but like i mean again 
broader market forces are a big deal. You know, like we were in this crate, you know, there was a video on Graham Stephan where he got like, I think a monkey to pick three stock names out of a jar and those stocks all went up in value. This has been like one of the best bull markets in history. So like, it's just not always like that guys. And, and you got to recognize when you're in a market like that, that, you know, at some point the, the shit's going to come down in price. And, and so, you know, just it's gut check time. Do you, do you want to be in this company or do you believe in this company for the long run? out past 2025 you know the, the long-term growth potential i think investors like me see this as a great opportunity this is where we consolidate this is where we bring the cost down this is where we do bigger buys you know and so for me i'm psyched that it's down <laughs> i love the fact it's down um i just you really have to like see this as a long-term play so in my opinion you know that's how i see it anyway i'm not an investment advisor and this is not investment advice for me personally, it's gut check time. I see it as like, yep, validated. I don't see anything out there that the company's doing that has changed the way I look at it. In fact, I, there are some really great press releases out there that I want to talk about for a minute. And I think Palantir is doing a great job of setting itself up to generate some huge network effects with this partnership with um, Hyundai Heavy Industries and expanding in South Korea. I love that they're basically creating this platform once to resell it to everyone who's in a similar industry right that's a great way to to scale your business and they're building the network effects right now that are going to enable that and they're laying the groundwork to enable those network effects and also this partnership with big bear ai this is again backs up what i said the the ai is going to be the commodity right the platform the os the big data os that's the thing you want to invest in and the fact that they can take another company's AI and models and integrate it into their platform to deliver value for customers, that to me is a leading indicator of where the whole industry is going. Like, eventually, someone like Google is going to release some sort of general AI, or maybe not general AI, but lots of commodity, you know, models that are out there that you can use and incorporate in anything. IBM, similar type of deal. You know, they're, they're going to have lots of really well-built models that are applicable to across multiple industries, but you're going to need a platform to integrate them into, and you're gonna need, they're going to need access to your data to do some type of transfer learning to tune the models on your industry. So again, this is backing up my sort of value proposition for the company, why I'm invested in it. And then this other partnership here uh, with, the, with this uh, Canadian supply chain firm, I think it's a government entity actually, but you know what's really cool about this is again they're gonna try and unlock similar value for canadian manufacturers right so it's like you build it once you gain all that domain knowledge you have it ready for resale across the entire industry and it's going to generate a lot of network effects so again all i'm seeing from palantir right now is backing up my original thesis and like i haven't changed my position i know a lot of you might not have seen this video because it was on a different channel but like i wanted to share it with you guys in case you hadn't seen it i wanted to make sure that you know, you guys understand why why I'm in this stock. And any of you guys out there who are super bummed, like, I mean, maybe, like, you know, it's gut check time. Think about whether or not you really want to be invested in a company like this. And in the same interview at some point in here, I say, you know, look, the bottom's always zero unless you're in commodities and then you can go lower than zero. You know, like, it's a joke. But, like, what I what I mean by that is, you know, like, if you, if, if you can't be prepared to sort of lose it all and it's like for me at least personally i wouldn't want to like I, I always know that that's the potential risk you know is, is zero and so far the only thing that would change my mind with palantir is if they started going in directions where it's like oh wow and like like the major red one of the major red flags that i saw was you know when they won't answer questions directly uh during their in you know their um quarterly summaries and and recaps like if they're if they're starting to act shady or they they won't Oh, you know, eventually release Foundry you know, so that people can evaluate it in a normal kind of way or they don't go and start building developer communities like I, I want to see. At some point, like, maybe I pull the pin if I think that, like, you know what? The company's just not going in the direction it needs to to get to where I, I want to see it out past 2025. But so far, they're just backing everything up and they're laying the groundworks for some tremendous network effects. So nothing's fundamentally changed for me. But definitely do your due diligence and decide if you're the type of person who wants to be invested in a company like Palantir.